Hey everyone, good morning. I am Priyanshi Gugar and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now we are going to solve first question of today's read code weekly contest 453, which is transform array to all equal elements. Okay, so let's see what is this question and how we can solve it. So in this question, you are given an integer array nums of size n containing only 1 and minus 1 and an integer k. And you can perform the following operation at most k times. Choose an index and multiply both nums i and nums i plus 1 by minus 1. Okay. Note that you can choose the same index i more than once in different operations. And you need to return true if it is possible to make all elements of the array equal after at most k operations and false otherwise. Okay. So in this question, you have been given with an array nums which contains 1 and minus 1 only and an integer k and you can perform this operation on nums and you need to return true if you can make all the elements uh, equal by performing this operation at most k number of times otherwise you need to return false okay so you might have used your mind a lot in this question like observing some pattern like uh, how many digits are there in minus between minus one or something like that you might have spent a lot of time in observing some pattern but i will tell you the most simplest approach for solving this question like how many target values you have either you can make all the elements as one or minus one right you have only two target values so what you can do you can simply iterate in this nums and first you can try to make all the values equal to 1 and check in how many operations you can do this or if you are able to do it or not. And in the second iteration you can check for the target value as minus 1 and you can see if you are able to make all the array elements equal to minus 1 in k operations or not. In that way you will be able to get your answer. Okay. So let's see how we can make all the array elements equal to these target values okay so let's see 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 and your k is 3 cool okay so you have two target values 1 and minus 1 okay so you will start iterating and you will start iterate till this point because you will have to access i plus 1 at index as well okay so that's index is 0 1 2 3 4 okay so right now you are at 0th index and your target value is let's say minus 1. Cool. Okay. So you, you may check if your nums of i is not equals to target. If it is not equals to target, then what you will do? You will simply update it to that target. Okay. So let's see for this iteration of our nums is this. So what we will do, we will simply update it to minus 1 and it's i plus 1 also with minus 1. So it will become 1. Okay. So what you are basically doing here, you will update your nums i with minus of nums i and you will update your nums of i plus 1 with minus of nums i, right? Sorry, i plus 1. But Cool. And you have to increment your count. It means you have performed one operation. Right. Okay. Now you are at this index. You will check whether it is equals to target. Target was minus 1 in this case. Okay. So what you will do? You will update it to minus 1 and update this to minus 1 and again increment your count. So your count will become 2. Okay. Now you are at this index. Is it equals to target? Yes. Now you are at this index. Is it equals to target? Yes. Okay. So you have came to the end of iteration of your loop because you can iterate till this point only. You can't access this one because you will have to access then i plus 1 as well, right? Okay. So how you will check whether you are able to make all the array elements equals to target or not? Okay. So for this, you can simply check for the last element. If this is equals to target, then yeah, you are able to make all the array elements equal to target, otherwise not, right? Because in while iterating to this point, you have changed all the elements equal to target, that's for sure. It's just the last index which you need to check whether it is equal to target or not. So you can just check whether this 
whether the element at the last index is equal to target or not. If yes, then you can simply return count. Otherwise, you need to return, let's say, int max. So, what you will return? You will return nums of n minus 1 is equal to equals to target. Then, what you need to return? You can return count. Otherwise, let's say you can return int max. Right. So, this function will tell you the number of operations needed to make the array elements equals to target. And you can check what is this function returning. It means, let's say, in this case, it will return int max, obviously, which is greater than k. So, it will not work. Okay. So, let's say if our target is 1. So, will it work? Okay. So, our array elements are this. Right. Okay. So, let's see. Right now, we are at this index. Is it equals to target? Yes. Keep moving. Is it equals to target? No. Let's update it. Okay. Now, we are at this index. Is it equals to target? No. Update it. Is it equals to target? Yes. Now, we will check whether the last element is equals to target or not. Oh, yeah. Is it equals to target? And how many operations we have done? We have done two operations. So, it will return two. And two is obviously less than three. So, yeah, we can make all these array elements equals to one. It means we will return true in this case right as you can see we are returning true here so let's see the another example as well so let's say this example minus one minus one minus one and then one 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 so let's say for target is equals to one okay initially our count is zero so right now we are at this index okay is it equals to target no let's update it okay we, now we are at this index. Let's update our count as well. Is it equals to target? Yes. Keep moving. Is it equals to target? No. Let's update it. Okay. Update our count. Now we are at this index. Is it equals to target? No. So let's update it. Now let's update our count. Now we are at this index. Is it equals to target? No. Okay. So let's update it. Now let's update our count as well. But the element at the last index is not equal to target, so it will return int max. So it means we can't make array elements equal to 1 in this case. Now let's check for target is equals to minus 1. Okay, elements are minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Cool. Okay, now let's initialize our count with 0. Is it equal to target? Yes, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Is it equal to target? No. Let's update it. Okay. Let's update our count as well. Now we are at this index. Is it equal to target? Yes. Keep. Oh, we are and we came to the end of iteration. But the last element at the last index is not equal to target. So it will also return int max. It means both of these values are greater than k. So it will return false. Right? As you can see, it will return false. Okay, so let's try code this so you will, you will get a better idea. So let's say we will declare the helper function solve with target 1. If it is less than or equals to k, then it will return to or solve function with target is equals to minus 1. Right? Okay, now let's declare our solve function vector int nums. See here we are not passing it by reference because we want we don't want to change this actual nums vector because we we need to call it for two different target values so we are creating its copy so let's say target and now what we need to do we will initialize our count as zero and let's say int n is equals to nums dot size and for int i is equals to 0 i is less than n minus 1 i plus plus and we will check if nums of i is not equals to target then we will update our nums of i with minus of nums of i nums of i plus 1 with minus of nums of i plus 1 and increment our count as well and what will we return return we need to check whether nums of n minus 1 
is equals to equals to target if yes then we will return count otherwise we will return int max cool okay let's try run this yeah it's working fine let's try submitting it yeah it's working fine so now let's talk about its time and space complexities as well as you can see we are calling this function two times which is just a single iteration so you can say that we go of 2n but yeah it can be written as we go of n and this space complexity will also be we go of n because we are creating a copy of this nums vector so its space complexity will also be we go of n so yeah this was all for this question i hope you get it and if you still have any doubts you can post in the comment section i will surely try to answer them Till then, bye guys. See you in the next video.